Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, I hope you're doing very well. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make a really cute cottage inspired lavender shoulder bag. This is a very beginner friendly tutorial. You really only need to kind of know the slip knot, single crochet and maybe a slip stitch and also how to chain and that's pretty much it. Um, once you've kind of got the grasp of those simple stitches like you're good to go. Um, if you're looking for a really cute aesthetic project but you don't really want it to just be simple but also you want it to be beginner friendly then I think that this is the perfect project for you. Um, I also just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who has supported me um, since I started doing YouTube um, more often about a year ago and I can't believe how much uh, the channel has grown. We're nearly at 6k subscribers. Um, if you are someone who's joining for the first time then hi and welcome. So yeah, um, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so here is everything that I'm going to be using for this pattern. So to start off, I'm going to be using this King Cole Big Value Baby Chunky Yarn in the colour Lime. And I'm going to be using uh, about 100 grams of this. And then I'm also using a 5mm hook with it. And then I've got a stitch marker, some scissors, and then I've got a button, so this one's kind of like just a pearlescent um, like white button and then I'm going to be sewing it on with some light coloured embroidery thread and an embroidery needle. And then for my secondary colour, which is going to be a lavender, I'm going to be using this Women's Institute Premium Acrylic Yarn. This is 100 grams, but you don't need 100 grams, I would say about 50 grams is more than enough. And this is in the colour Bright Lilac. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my main colour and my 5mm hook and I'm just going to start off with a slip knot. So I'm literally just going to make the slip knot exactly how you would normally but I'm just going to kind of make a number 6 by crossing over the short end with the long end. So sort of like this and then just holding it and then I take the long end and I push the long end through that hole and then grab it on the other side and then I kind of pull it through. So you have something like this and then you just want to pull tight on both ends to create that slip knot. Okay, so that is the slip knot. And then we are going to be making a chain of 32 plus 1, so technically 33. So to chain I'm going to be wrapping the yarn anti-clockwise around the hook like this. And then I'm just going to basically slide the hook down, catching that tail that we just wrapped around, slide the hook down and I'm going to slide it through that bottom loop there, like that. So that is a chain of one and we're going to be making 33 of these. So you're just going to want to wrap the yarn around and then pull down through the next loop. Wrap the yarn around, pull down through the next loop. And I'm going to do that until I have 33 chains and you can count your chains by counting these little like V's. So we've got one, two and three and I'm just going to carry on until I have 33. Okay so I now have my 33 chains and I'm basically now going to be crocheting down the chain. So normally we would crochet into each sort of top loop of each chain as you can see we have these top loops but I am actually going to be flipping the chain over so that you can see these back bumps, you can see these vertical, oh sorry, horizontal lines going across behind each chain. So here is our first chain and here is our second chain. So I'm going to go into that back bump of that second chain, just inserting the hook into that back bump, like that. And now we're going to make a single crochet. So for the single crochet, you insert the hook into the bump you yarn over anti-clockwise, you pull the hook down through the first loop only, so this sort of top one right here, pull the hook down like that. So you have two loops on the hook and now we yarn over again anti-clockwise but we slide the hook down both loops like that. So that is your single crochet and you're just going to want to do that into each back bump now all the way across. So I'm going into the next back bump, insert my hook, yarn over, pull the hook down the, through the first loop, two loops on the hook and then yarn over anti-clockwise again 
and pull the hook down through both loops. So I'm just going to continue this all the way across until I get to my very last back bump and you should have 32 single crochets by the end of the row. Okay, so this is what you should have once you have done all of your single crochets into each back bump. You should just have this long kind of strip. And now what we're going to do is we are going to add two more single crochets into that last single crochet that we just made. So literally just the one that you just made, we're gonna make another single crochet into it. Okay, so I'm just going into the same uh, back bump and making a second single crochet, and then I'm going to make a third single crochet. So into your very last back bump, you should have three single crochets. Now you should see how the work is naturally trying to curve to round to sort of the other side of the strip. So we've been working across this strip and now we're going to kind of let the work naturally turn around this way. And as you can see on the opposite side, we have all of these V's that we can crochet into. And that's because we worked into the back bump. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my next V, can you see this one right here? So if you move the tail out of the way, we have this kind of back bump gap here and then we have this V right here and we're going to go into that V with our single crochet. So it might be a little bit tight but you just want to push your hook through that V, okay? And I'm going to include this tail so I'm wrapping it like over the hook because I'm just going to weave it in and that way we don't have to sew any ends in but if it's easy for you to leave it out and sew it, uh, weave it or sew it in later then that's perfectly fine but I'm just going to wrap it over the hook and then make my single crochet like that and then I'm going to go into the next stitch on the opposite side and make another single crochet and I'm literally just doing exactly what we did in the previous row I'm making one single crochet into each stitch on this side and then when I reach that very last stitch of the row I'm going to be making another three single crochets so it will be this last stitch right here so as you can see here this was our first single crochet and this is going to be our last one so into that very last one I'm going to make three single crochets. So I'm going to do that now and then I'm going to come back once that is finished. Okay so I've just reached my very last single crochet so now I'm going to be making my three single crochets into that last stitch. So one, two and three. Okay and then I'm going to place my stitch marker into that very last sti uh, stitch that we made. So this right here just placing it through that V so that's just basically going to mark the end of each round so that you are able to keep track of where you're at now from this point forward it is very simple we are just working in continuous rows of single crochet so we're not doing any increased stitches where we crochet multiple stitches into one stitch we are literally just doing one in each stitch so we're going to be doing the continuous rows of single crochet from round 2 to round 22 so I'm literally just going to be going into the next stitch, so this one right here, and making a single crochet. And then I'm going to go into the next stitch and make a single crochet. Into the next stitch, single crochet, all the way around this kind of like sausage shape. And then obviously when you get to your kind of three stitch cluster, you don't need to do anything about it, just kind of ignore that it's a bit bulkier just go into each stitch making one single crochet and then the same when you go on the opposite side and just one single crochet into each stitch and then when you have finished that last single crochet you're just going to want to replace the stitch marker in that stitch so you do your single crochet into that stitch and then place the stitch marker back in so I'm basically just going to do continuous rows of single crochet until I have 22 rows in total and the way that you can count the rows if I hold it vertically it's a little bit easier as you can see here this was our first row you can kind of see these lines or like holes going across um, and they kind of look like small V's like this so it's one like one here 
one here. So all of these going across here is one row. I've got all of these stitches in the previous row, of row one, and then all of these vert uh, horizontal stitches above it from the row two. So that's kind of how you would just count them. And you might need to kind of spread apart the stitches so that you can see it better. But here is a row and then here is a row. So I'm going to meet you back after I've done 22 rows and then I will show you the next step. Okay, so I've just done my 22 rows of single crochet, so this is what it should be like so far. You'll notice that it's sort of just like this big pocket. So for row 23, or round 23, um, this is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be making a decrease stitch um, at either side, so right here and right here. And the decrease stitch, uh, the way that I like to do it, is um, by crocheting two single crochets together into one. So I'm going to do two decreases. So I'm going to start my next single crochet into the next stitch, inserting my hook, yarn over, pull through, and then I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch, and then yarn over and pull through. So now you have three loops on the hook, and now I'm just going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. So that is a decrease stitch, and that counts as one decrease. So we're going to make two decreases in total on this side. So I'm going to do another one, inserting my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops, like that. So now I'm just going to make one single crochet into each stitch until I get roughly to the other side, and I'm just going to kind of mentally make a note of these two stitches right here and that is where I'm going to start my next decrease and then the two next to it will be the second decrease on this side. So next step is literally just one single crochet into each stitch until I reach the opposite side of the bag and you don't need to kind of count this, this is literally just um, kind of once you get to the other side so don't worry too much about what number stitch it is, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't make a difference. So I'm just going to go into each stitch until I reach the other side, making a single crochet. Okay, so we have now reached the opposite side of where the stitch marker is. So now I'm going to make my next decrease, inserting the hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then insert the hook into the next stitch, and yarn over and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Okay, and then I'm going to make a second decrease, so insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Okay, and then I'm just going to make one single crochet into each stitch until I get to my stitch marker. Okay, so now I have finished my 23rd round, and to complete the round I'm just going to slip stitch into the next stitch. So I've just done my last single crochet. So for the slip stitch I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch of the next row, and I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop, two loops on the hook, and then I'm literally just going to pull my first loop on the hook through the second. So I'm literally just pulling it down like that. Okay, and that is the slip stitch. So now I'm just going to fasten off by chaining one, and then I'm going to cut the yarn. So you should have a loop like this, and you're just going to want to pull the loop through like that. Okay, so that is the main base of the bag all done. For the next step, I'm actually just going to take out this pink stitch marker, because we don't really need it anymore. Um, and I'm going to grab two other stitch markers, and I'm just kind of using different colours so that it helps a little bit um, and not get too confusing. So we're basically going to be marking the middle stitch of either side of the bag with a stitch marker, and this is going to help map out how to make the scoop sort of shape for the straps. So again, I'm not counting, I'm literally just going to lay the bag flat, and I'm going to kind of find the centre stitch. So that's about here, and I'm just going to place one stitch marker through that centre stitch, like that, 
and then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. I'm just going to flip it over and then I'm just going to kind of find that middle stitch. So it's roughly about here. Again, it doesn't really need to be exact. Okay, so basically the reason why I've marked these two middle stitches is because for the straps we're going to be crocheting from the middle out and I'm just focusing on one strap for the minute. So let's say that we are starting um, on this side. So I would be crocheting from the middle out and then I'm going to be crocheting all the way around and I'm going to stop at my yellow stitch marker. And then when I do the other side, I'll flip my bag over and I'll be crocheting um, this way going all the way around and stopping at the green stitch marker. So it's kind of like you want to have that midpoint that you're going to stop at and you know exactly where you need to stop. It doesn't really matter what side you start off with, but because I'm left-handed, I'm working from left to right, um, that means that technically if this is facing this way, I'm gonna be starting on this strap here because it's impossible for me to do this strap on this side when I'm left-handed because this would be uh, from right to left. So if you're right-handed, then obviously you'd be starting over here and working all the way round, and then you would flip the work and you would work from this way all the way round. So I'm going to take my main colour again, and I'm going to make a slip knot. And I'm going to attach the yarn one stitch away from the stitch marker. So here's our stitch marker right here. I'm going into the next stitch, and I'm kind of pushing the hook from the front of the work to the back taking my slip knot and I'm going to pull the slip knot through this stitch like that. So you should have something like this where you've pulled it through and then you just want to chain one and this attaches it so that you can kind of like pull it and it won't come off. So for the strap section it's kind of going to be working on actually the top kind of half of the bag and this is going to create a scoop section and then after that is the strap. So this is just creating more shape before we make the strap. So once you have your chain one, um, after you've made your slip knot, we're now just going to be doing a decrease stitch at either edge. So we're going into the next two stitches with the decrease stitch. So just inserting my hook, pull up a loop, into the next stitch, insert the hook and pull up a loop. Three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. That is your decrease stitch and then I'm just going to be making one single crochet into each stitch all the way around stopping when I have two stitches left right before the stitch marker so we're not counting the stitch marker as a stitch this is simply just like the marker of where it ends so I will be stopping once I have these two left so I'll be stopping at this third stitch from the stitch marker technically so I'm literally just going to make one single crochet to each stitch all the way around, stopping before the last two stitches. Okay, so I have my two stitches left and now I'm going to make my decrease like that. Okay, so that is the end of row one for the bag strap section. And now I'm just going to turn the work and we're going to start row two. So for row two, I'm literally just going to be doing the exact same thing, making a decrease at the beginning and a decrease at the end and then just single crochets in the middle. So I'm going to start with my decrease like that. And then I'm going to make one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And I'm going to stop when I have my two stitches left of the row and once you get to the other side, you'll notice that there is that chain one we made and then the single crochet decrease. We're going to ignore that chain completely. So we're just focusing on these last two stitches right here. So I'm just gonna make one single crochet to each stitch all the way around, stopping before the last two stitches. Okay, so I've just reached the last two stitches, so I'm just going to make my decrease like that. Okay, so it's simply just decreasing at either edge and then making single crochets into the middle. And I'm literally just going to repeat that row and you'll notice as the more rows you do, the less like stitches are actually in the row. 
Okay, so I'm just basically continuing this type of row where we decrease at either edge until I have 11 rows in total. So I've just completed my second row, so I'm literally just going to keep going until I've finished row 11 and then I'm going to come back and show you the next step. Okay, so I've just finished my 13th row and I had three stitches left in the row and it's important that you do have three stitches left. So for the next row, and this is actually going to be the actual strap section and we're basically just continuing up. So we're turning the work. So I'm now working like on the inside of the work and I'm going to be making a chain of 81 and this is going to be the length of your strap. Now depending if you want your strap longer or shorter then you can do less chains or more chains however it's important to know that the bag fastens with a bow um, so you're basically tying both straps together in a bow so the shorter chain that you do the less space you have to make a bow and therefore the bag might be a little bit tight around the shoulder um, so I think 80, 81 chains is a pretty good amount so I'm going to be making a chain of 81 Okay, so I've done my 81 chains and just like we did at the beginning I'm going to be flipping the chains over and I'm going to make my single crochet into that second back bump from the hook. So I'm picking up that second back bump, making a single crochet and I'm going to make one single crochet into each back bump all the way down the chain that we just made and then when I get to the end of the chain as you can see here um, I'll stop and then I'll show you how we kind of connect this strap here to the three stitches that we've got here. So I'm literally just doing single crochets all the way down this chain and then I'll meet you back once I've done my last single crochet. Okay so I've just done my 80 single crochets all the way down the chain and now we have this kind of three stitch section right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a slip stitch into the next two stitches. So I'm inserting my hook into the next or first stitch of this sort of top row and I'm going to make a slip stitch like that and then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch as well like that okay so you should have something like this and then I'm going to turn the work around again just focusing on the strap not the actual bag but turning turning the work and I'm going to skip those two slip stitches that we just made so there's the first and there's the second and I'm going into that first single crochet of the row, making a single crochet into that stitch, like that. Okay, and now we're literally just making one single crochet into each stitch all the way up the strap. So technically 80 single crochets. And then after I have finished the second row of the strap, I will turn the work again. So turning the work at this end, and then I will crochet all the way down the chain or the strap for the last time 80 single crochets and then I will meet you back once I've reached uh, the end because we are going to make our slip stitch into that last stitch so I hope that makes sense so just to recap you want to turn your work skip the two slip stitches and then make one single crochet all the way up uh, into each stitch of the strap then row three turn the work single crochet all the way down and then we are going to make a slip stitch into that very last um, single crochet at the top. So yeah I will do that and then I will meet you back. Okay so I've just done my 80 single crochets for the third row and now I'm going to make my final slip stitch into that last single crochet of the decrease section um, at the top. So I'm going to make my slip stitch into that stitch like that and then we have attached the strap to the bag. Now I'm just going to chain one and fasten off And then just pull that out and then tighten the knot. So this is what we have so far. We have the decrease section up here and then we have the strap over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to repeat the exact same thing that I did for this side here. Or actually I think it was this side. It was on this side wasn't it? Um, I'm going to repeat it on this side so I'll be flipping the bag over because I'm left handed and then I'm going to attach my yarn right next to this yellow stitch marker and work the same um, amount of rows um, decreasing at either edge. So that was 13 rows where I decreased at either edge um, and single crochets in, in between them. 
and then when I have my three stitches left I will make my chain of 81 then I will single crochet into the second back bump from the hook and then into each back bump all the way down and then I'll make my two slip stitches into those first two stitches of the decrease section and then I will turn the work, single crochet all the way back up the bag strap section and then turn the work, single crochet all the way down the bag strap section and then I'll make my final slip stitch into that very last stitch um, of the decrease section and then chain one and fasten off. So just rewind the video if you need to, to repeat this section here on this side and then once I've done that I'm going to come back and show you the next step. So I'm now going to be working on the buttonhole section. So depending on the size of button that you are using, um, might mean that you have to do more chains. If you're using a very small button, then you might have to do less chains. But I'm going to take my main color and make a slip knot. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the sort of middle stitch right here. So it's this middle one. And I'm gonna pull the slip knot through you're going to want to make the amount of chains that you need to fit around the button. So my button's quite large, so I'm going to start off with about eight chains. Like that. Then I'm just going to see if it fits around the button. So this is actually quite big, so I'm going to minus two chains. So that's six chains. Just see if it fits around. I think I'll just do one more. So I've got seven chains in total. So once you have your chains, you're then just going to want to slip stitch into the exact same spot where we attach the yarn. So I'm going into that middle stitch on the bag, inserting my hook, and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through, two loops on the hook, and then I'm just going to pull through the second loop with the first, so just pulling through, making a slip stitch like that, and then chain one and fasten off. From. But as you can see, when you flip the bag over and you pull the button loop down, it will kind of go over the button right here. In my opinion, I think it's better to have a tighter buttonhole than a longer one, just because then you don't run the risk of the loop pinging off of the button. Okay, so we're now going to be working on the lavender section. So for the lavender section, the lavender leaves or like flower uh, petals are going to be about halfway in from the bag strap so where we started the bag strap to about halfway in and then the rest of the bag strap is just going to be like a lavender line going up the middle so what we want to do first is make the lavender line that goes all the way up to the end and then after that we're going to do the lavender leaves halfway up so you're going to want to take your purple yarn and make a slip knot this and then just taking one side of the bag so I'm just going to go into start on this bag strap and we're starting sort of in the center of the bag strap so as you can see we've got these holes and you're just going to kind of want to go into this middle hole right here push your hook through to the other side and then you're going to want to place your slip knot on the hook and you're going to pull the slip knot through that middle hole of the strap. So just pulling it through like this. Now we're going to be making slip stitches all the way up the middle. So we're kind of going through these middle holes. So I'm going to insert my hook into the next uh, like hole in the middle. So I'm going about here and I'm literally going to make a slip stitch. So I've inserted my hook, I'm going to yarn over anti-clockwise and pull up a loop and then I'm literally just going to pull the first loop through the second like that and that is your slip stitch and then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the next sort of middle hole so I'm going into finding that next middle hole pushing the hook through and then I'm yarning over and pulling the hook through and then I'm pulling the first loop through the second like that Again, into the next middle hole, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull the first loop through to the second. And I'm literally just gonna continue that all the way up, making slip stitches all the way to the end. So 
Okay, so I've just reached the end of the row and now I'm just going to kind of pull up the loop so we're not chaining one. I'm just going to cut the yarn and just pull it through like that and then we will weave this in later and now I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the other side making slip stitches all the way up the bag strap and then fastening off and then I'll come back and show you how to do the lavender leaf petal things. Okay so I've just done both of the purple stripes on both straps and now I'm going to show you how to do the lavender leaves or the petals. So you're going to want to take your purple yarn and make a slip knot and we're going to go right to the bottom of the bag strap, so right here, and we're going to insert our hook into the first sort of loop of the first V. So if you are right handed then you'll be inserting the hook into that right loop, because I'm left handed I'm going to be inserting it into this left loop. And then I'm going to pull the slip knot through that left loop. So I'm just going to pull it through like that and then we're going to chain one. So the sequence is going to be a single crochet, a chain three and a slip stitch all in the same stitch. So I'm going to start off with a single crochet in the exact same loop that I just did the chain one. So a single crochet and then I'm going to chain three. So that's one, two, and three. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the exact same um, loop that we've gone into. So slip stitch. And what you should be left with is this sort of like bumpy kind of semicircle type shape and it's got like a hole in the middle. And now we're going to repeat that sequence all the way up. So single crochet into the next loop. Again, remember we're only working on the left loops if you're right-handed the right loops so make a single crochet into that next loop chain three and then slip stitch into that loop again okay so that's our second little petal done into the next loop single crochet chain three and then slip stitch into that same loop. Okay, and that is literally the sequence. And you're just going to want to continue that all the way up the side loops of the um, purple like strip that we've done. And you're going to want to stop about halfway through the bag strap. So you're probably going to want to stop about 40 stitches up from the base of the bag strap. So about halfway. And then I will meet you back once I have reached that halfway point. Okay so I've just reached about halfway up the strap and now we're going to be working back down because we want to leave this section up here blank. So I'm going to kind of turn the work around so now we're working on the opposite side and now we're going to be going into these right hand side loops. If you're right handed you'll be going into the left hand side loops. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to be grabbing the right side loop of the kind of chain that I just went into. So here's the left side loop that I just went into. And now I'm gonna insert my hook into that right side loop. It's a little bit fiddly. And I'm gonna make my single crochet and then chain three and then slip stitch into that same chain. So it's the same that we've been doing before. And now we're just working into these kind of uh, right side loops. It's a little bit more difficult to see but you can see these kind of vertical short lines going down and those are the other loops that we're going into. So I'm going into the next loop, single crochet, chain three and then slip stitch into that same loop. Like that. Okay. So you can kind of see the lavender shape starting to form and everything is kind of like now uh, gathering, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to continue this all the way down until I reach the bottom. So once I get to that very last vertical line at the bottom, I'll make my very last petal and then I will meet you back where we're going to fasten off. Okay, so I'm just about to do my very last petal. So I'm going into my last loop and I'm going to make a single crochet. And then a chain two, uh, chain three, sorry, not chain two, chain three, and then a slip stitch into 
that same chain like that okay and then I'm just going to chain one and fasten off like that okay and that is the lavender section all done as you can see don't worry if it twists a little bit that's okay because um, it's going to kind of untwist when we tie the straps together um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm literally just going to weave in all of my ends and then I'm just going to sew my button down onto my uh, sort of this centre section here of the middle of the bag if that makes sense so that when I pull the button loop down it can go over the button. So I'm going to be sewing the button with my embroidery thread and my embroidery needle. So I've just got this light colour here. And then once I've sewn the button down and weaved in all of the ends, I'm going to show you how we tie it into a ribbon and make it actually look like a nice ribbon sort of thing. So now I'm going to show you how to tie the ribbons together. So you're just going to want to start off by making sure that your straps aren't twisted and then you're going to want to just make a simple knot by overlapping one over the other and then just make a little knot like that, just a normal one. And then as if you was to tie a shoelace, you're going to make a loop with the left strap like that and just hold it with your thumb and finger. And then normally we would wrap the bag strap anti-clockwise around but this time we're going to wrap it clockwise so like that okay and then once you've wrapped the uh, other strap clockwise around you're actually going to poke the same strap through the hole that you just wrapped around so I'll just show you you wrap it around anti-clockwise and then you bring the strap through that loop right and you only want to bring it through about halfway like that and then you just want to pull tight on the two loops you have at the top and just bear in mind that you've got obviously got the short strap so you kind of want to adjust it and then tighten it and then kind of pull it down and then tighten it again just to get the right amount um, that you want so that is how the bow is looking. And this is what the final result is looking like. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I really loved making this project. If you have any ideas of what you'd like me to make next, then feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.